governors a few weeks ago. I'm sure everybody in this room has watched Law and Order Criminal Intent. Well, Katie has been with Candles for Clemency and on the board of the Jim Owls Liberal Democratic Club for a number of years. And I want to introduce her and let her say a few words. Thank you. I just want to say I'm glad we're all here. I'm sad we're all, we all have to be here, but um, we're in good company and I want to make a statement. You know, um, so it's this is just wrong, and uh, I'm grateful to be involved. And one politician, one elected official who never fears standing up to whoever the power to be is. A former police officer who has really gone to bat on clemency and has had long discussions with the governor, present governor, and the previous governor. A man who should, who's borough president now, and one day will be our mayor in New York City. My very dear friend, our friend, Eric Adams. Back in, back in 19... <laughs> Governor, Mr. Train. Back in 1990, I used to perform midnight tours of duty. I used to get off my tour and go to Rockefeller Plaza and demonstrate for the reversal of the Rockefeller drug laws. Right. Well Government right. was slow. Government was slow. The first thing I did when I got elected senator was to partner with Eric Snyderman and we reversed Rockefeller drug law. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In 2000, I marched and stood with the men and women of the LGBT community. And I stated that people have the right to marry each other. Yeah. People pushed and said it was not possible. When I got elected, I teamed up with a group of Democrats and sat down with Governor David Patterson at the time and said we need to smoke out those who pretended as though they supported the bill and at a minimum we need to put the bill to the floor and allow people to vote on the bill. We put that bill to the floor and subsequently, years later, we were able to bring that bill to the floor and vote. And now men and women in the state of New York, no matter who they are, if you love someone, you have the right to marry them and spend the rest of their life with them. That is what we did. As, I, as a police officer, I watched countless number of men and women of color stopped and frisked unjustly. Yes. Yes. And it was wrong to demonize and treat them as they were criminals. I partnered with them assemblyman named Hakeem Jeffries. And we were able to put in the floor a bill that would no longer allow a database of innocent people to be held by police officers. And that bill passed and became a law so that young people would not have their names on police records for the rest of their life. It's a pathway to justice. And I'm not planning on losing. Holly must be free. She must be free. She must be free because those of us who are experienced the beauty of our freedom know that when someone has already paid their debt to society, they should not be continually taxed just because it's comfortable to do so. It's now time And so we are not the honorable ones, those of us who are elected. We are honorable when we speak on your behalf because you elected us for a purpose and a reason. You are the honorable ones that come out year after year 
and raise your voice to speak on behalf of someone that could have easily have been forgotten. Someone that is only attempting to come back to society and contribute in a very meaningful way. So this is an important initiative. And the release of Holly is the re release of countless number of other young men and women who need clemency. This battle is important. And as a person who wore a blue uniform and wore a bulletproof vest and protected the children and families of this state, I add my voice to your voice. Yes. And yes. I join wow. my colleagues who are here. Woo. I don't let anyone tell you that you are anti-public safety because you believe Holly needs to be free. I am the symbol of public safety yes. and I join you in this call. Yes. And it is imperative that the governor does the right thing and sends the right message to give clemency to a person that deserves it. If ever there was a reason to develop a policy or a law or a cause to give clemency to an individual, this is a textbook case. And if we fail on this case, we are failing on everything we say as Americans to allow people to be free after they have shown that they paid their debt to society. We must make this happen this year. This must be happening this year to bring clemency for an important individual's house. Thank you very much. I must tell you, that Eric Adams would call me during the Patterson administration at one in the morning and say, David, just the governor just had his third drink. I think I'm going to get a commitment that is going to grant clemency to Judy Clark. <laughs> Unfortunately, he needed a few more drinks because he didn't grant the clemency. And you're fantastic. I want to introduce now somebody that everybody knows from in the living rooms, from House of Cards, and the TV show, The Affair. She also starred in um, The Exonerated Off-Broadway. She's a real lefty, a real lefty. And I love her, and she's gonna say a few words. Kathleen Shelfon. say the words of Shakespeare, something that the governor seems perhaps never to have known or to have forgotten. The quality of mercy is not strained. It falleth like the gentle rain from heaven. The governor has no heart. Remember that. The governor has no heart. Now a very old friend of mine, someone that this community knows very, very well. He's been in office for a number of years and he's very outspoken. And that's a council member from Queens, council member Danny. I'll preface it by saying a very old friend. So I got it out, you know? uh, anyway, on the way up today, I heard the song Heartless, and I think it's by Kanye West, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> That'll show you my age for sure, right? Take on. Uh, Take on. Oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is I want to ask the governor, how can you be so heartless? And you, when you think about the hundreds upon hundreds of lives of people who remain behind bars, after having served their sentence, after having been in prison for 25, 30 years in many cases, people who have turned their lives around, people who have reformed themselves, people who have led exemplary lives while they were doing the crime, deserve and need clemency and pardons from the crimes that they were co convicted of. And we see this is particularly true with regard to those who are aging in our prisons. I just turned 61 years old, 
and I can't imagine what it would be like for someone to be my age or older and try to continue to survive in prison. So last year we were out here, I was out here as well, and I've been proud to be with Alan and Anthony and all of you in this movement moving forward to demand from the governor the release and clemency and pardons that we want to come up with this system. But I heard Alfonso David at that time make a promise That's right. That's that right. people were That's going right. to be considered and that there would be this process. And the process supposedly happened, but we didn't see the releases. Now how is it that Ronald Reagan can release hundreds of hundreds of people but in the progressive state so declared by our governor? So declared at every event that I've been to. He loves to say New York is the progressive leader in the nation. I'm sure you've heard him say that. But yet he's only had a handful of clemencies and pardons. This is unacceptable. This is why we're here and this is why we're going to continue to fight. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Now let's hear from somebody that's spent 27 years at Bedford Correctional Facility. Donna Hill. Donna. Donna is a warrior. representing the women and men that we so, we so dearly love and know deserve second chances. I stand here today, not as Donna Hilton, but as inmate 86G0206 to say that everyone, everyone has the capacity to change. Everyone can do and be great, be better human beings. And we all, all have that in us. And we just want Governor Cuomo to understand that how can you say that you believe in a God that does allow second chances, that does allow compassion, that does allow for forgiveness, and you, you yourself do, does not, do not exhibit it? I stand here for them. I stand here for Judy Clark. I stand here for Valerie Gator. I stand here for Rosalind Smith. I stand here for Karen Mullally. I stand here for Holly Coomber. I stand here for Malika Baker. I stand here for Karima Levy. I stand here for so many women that I was in prison with, that I grew up with. Judy was like my mother and continues to be like my mother. The woman that is standing here and speaking to you today was shaped and formed out of the care and the concern that was Judy Clark, the care and the concern that was Rosalind Smith, the care and the concern that were so many inside with me. I stand here for them. Everything that I do today is for them and will always be for them. If I have the capacity to change and I can stand here and represent them and stand on a platform with these people behind me and definitely in front of me, surrounded and just enclosed in this compassion and this love, then they can also. And we must get him to understand that. The time is now. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. The time is now. It has to happen now. People are aging and dying in prison, and it is no longer right. It is inhumane to treat people the way that they are being treated. It is inhumane to continue to look at someone like they are wrong, like they are lower than the dirt on the, on the ground that we walk on. It's inhumane to treat people without compassion. It is inhumane to not have the capacity to forgive and to say that the laws that you have put into place that supposedly rehabilitate do not work because that is your message right. that right. our laws that we have in place that you the legislature and the governor have put into place and enact every day does not allow the capacity for people to rehabilitate to change and become better people but i stand here to say to, today to say that that is not true that is not true 
you to, to please open your heart, open your mind, and to know that we all are human. We all have the capacity to change, and we deserve second chances. Those people are aging. I have to stress this. Aging and dying in prison. I have been home four years, and I have buried so many women, so many women within this prison system and outside. It is no, it's not right. And we need the help. We need your help. We need the community because it takes a village. It takes a village to do what we needed to do. It takes a village to change these laws. It, take, it takes a village to show compassion and to get this man to understand that he should not and cannot any longer deny people the right for a second chance, deny people the right to be with their daughters, with their families, because we've also locked up families in this in this mass incarceration system that we have. So I'm thankful for, for you and thankful that you are here, and I thank you for listening to our stories, and I thank you for opening yourself up, and I just thank you. And Eric Adams, I really want to, a really, really big thank you for you, because for Judy especially, as you don't know what this means don't know what this means and I just pray that today makes all the difference. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right, Donna. All right. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna hear from a longtime civil rights activist, Sanford Rubenstein. Woo! Yeah! yeah. I stood on the sidewalk in the Bronx and I was talking to the district attorney of the Bronx and there was a man named Mamadou Diallo. And because people like you were there demonstrating for him not to be prosecuted, a few days later a decision was made that he not be prosecuted. So these demonstrations, these marches really have an impact on accomplishing what we want to accomplish. And the message I want to send to Governor Cuomo is a very simple one. You have to temper justice with mercy. And that's what we're asking for here. To temper justice with mercy, it is appropriate and it must be done. And all of you who are here today are really making a difference because by being here, we will get the right thing done by the governor. Do the right thing. Yeah. Our next speaker who's been here last year and has returned and she is perhaps she's just a stellar star in the New York State Assembly and just I can't have enough wonderful things to say about her and uh, that's Assemblywoman Joanne Simon. but a stellar star. Uh, thank you. Listen, I'm so happy I was able to get here in time. Uh, I just drove up from the city with uh, a new soon-to-be colleague, Bobby Carroll. Uh, and, uh, but we're here because we want to send a message. And the message is, it's time. It is time to do the right thing. It is time to have mercy. It is time to recognize that People change, people learn, and one does not have to for something that was done, that was a mistake that was made so many years ago, when one has completely and utterly rehabilitated any issues that they had previously. So it is time, and I'm here to thank the governor for clemency, for Judith Clark, and for so many others need clemency. Thank you. Yes. And newly elected, and one of his first acts is showing the kind of person he is, Assemblymember elect Robert Carroll. Yes. Thank you, Alan. Um, it is so necessary here in New York State that we have real criminal justice reform, that we have compassion in our parole, and clemency system, we cannot morally lead if we do not realize that we must look at all of the individuals
individuals of our state, and no matter whom they are or what they've done, that we can find ways and realize that all of us can be rehabilitated, that all of us have a sense of grace. And we must urge the governor and all people uh, to look into their hearts and to, say, and to see that we are all people and we all have a right to rehabilitation uh, and release. And so I hope that Judith Clark will be granted clemency. Thank you, Alan. Now, representing Black Lives Matter, Hook. that are here today for restoring my faith in New York City politics a little bit. <laughs> yeah, only a poquito for our Spanish speakers. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hulk Newsom, Black Lives Matter. What you don't know about me is I grew up in the South Bronx. And what we hear a lot is a lot of your friends are going to either be in jail or dead. And it's true, most of the people who I went to school with are either in jail or dead. Many of them are in jail today. Some of them were convicted of crimes which granted them, which gave them 30 or 40 years. Our justice system, to give someone 30, 40 years behind bars means that they have no faith in the rehabilitation of these people, which means they have no, which means that they have no faith in the system. Now what I'm telling you is Black Lives Matter from top to bottom. There's a lot of mixing and issue mixing, but at its core, it's about criminal justice reform. Yes. This system is broken yes. and it needs to be fixed. Yes. So I will march from now until the end of time to bring yes. justice to America, yes. to this system, to this world. I say free Judith, I say free Holly, I say free Max B. There are too many people behind bars there decaying. Free her. Free her. Free him. Free my brothers and sisters. I'm so sick and tired of this system failing us. I'm proud to be here, and I'll be here whenever you call on me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, just so you'll know, next week, Saturday, in Brooklyn on the 21st at 1 p.m., we will be marching to end the violence in our communities. That's on Empire Street and Franklin Avenue. I ask that you come and support us so that we can support our communities. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you. Another person, another person from the performing arts, um, one of the stars, he actually played two roles, twin brothers in the following. And he was on Dexter and Homeland, a newly grown activist who is going to be contributing a great deal to our communities, um, Sam Underwood. So I, I, I think that's why I'm here. Um, I, am, I am overwhelmed and proud to be here with you guys. Uh, we are here because we have a heart and hopefully we can remind uh, Governor Cuomo that he has one too somewhere. Uh, third time is a charm. Uh, it's a full harvest moon tonight as well, so hopefully as we're nearing the equinox, uh, time to take stock of a few things and forget some things as well. Uh, so hopefully that affects him. I just want to add, um, I echo Katie's sentiment about it sadly being here tonight. It, it doesn't make sense that we need to come all the way up here to remind him to follow through on the promises that he's made. Um, I feel like you know, the compassion that is shown to Wall Street bankers who crash our economy, uh, to police officers that kill innocent people, and as a, as a privileged white straight guy, um, I know that if I was convicted uh, for rape, I'd probably get off in about... If I was...
was uh, convicted or, or uh, prosecuted at all. So I just want to echo that. I'm so, so proud to be here. And however many times it takes, we'll keep doing it until this happens. So thank you very much. Yeah. We're going to run Sam for office. Stay tuned. And now uh, representing an organization called RAP, uh, Release Agent um, People in Prison, Laura Wright. because when we came here the first time, the governor should have done something. That's right. And we shouldn't have to be back here. But we should keep coming because someone has to tell yes. that governor that he has all this power, he's great at using it for things that he thinks are popular, and he should use his power to bring some justice to New York State. Yeah, so yes, I should. speak for release agent people in prison and just for a little context. <laughs> over the age of 50 went up another I think 500 to over 10,000 people. It is now 20% of the total number because the, the reforms to the Rockefeller drug law did bring the total population down. It's exposing the fact that the, the reason we have mass incarceration is because of the long sentences that have been handed out over the last 20 years and now we have in this state too the beginning of life without parole. These are unconscionable Things. And so this last week, we just had a memorial for a man who was 70 years old, who had gone to the parole board 10 times. John McKenzie had the most incredible package you could imagine to go to the parole board. And he, there was an editorial in the New York Times about his case because a judge had declared the parole board in contempt of court. the same thing again and he had no more fight in him and he took his own life and we had a memorial for him but he clearly when he died he left a message that he wanted to fight for all the people who also need to get out who also need clemency compassionate release of parole and by the way the governor is the one who appoints the parole commissioners and he is their boss and so we say to him too the responsibility for John McKenzie's death is at your feet. Yeah. That's, right. Right. That's right. I just came from a conference. I'm speaking for rap and I'm also wearing the t-shirt of my sisters here. Woo! The National Council. Woo! The National Council of Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls and we were just all at a conference in Oakland of uh, the formerly incarcerated people's movement and the slogan there was all of us or none. Right. It means that if the governor lets one person out, we're not going to stop coming here. If he lets two people out, we're not going to stop coming right, here. Right. President Obama has let some people out. He also needs to give clemency to Leonard Peltier. And yes. We stand here for everyone That's right, Laura. who has served their time, has been punished enough. We say we don't want a society that's based on racism and permanent punishment. We want, we want one that's based on rebuilding our communities mm. and that if our elected officials will not do it, they are not safe. And I just want to say one other thing, that as RAP, I work with and as a, a representative of political prisoners going for, for clemency and for freedom, I've worked with some of the elected officials on this stage and they do have the kind of heart that we want in elected officials. We are going to go to Cuomo's house in a little while, we're going to let him know and we have to keep pushing him because he is the one who has to of John McKenzie belongs on Andrew Cuomo's doorstep. Andrew Cuomo has no heart. We have four more speakers. Now I'd like to introduce uh, a former council member. He's full of action. He's Action Jackson, Robert Jackson. Well, thank you. And I'm happy to be up here with all of you and to see all of you out there. And I have my candle. So raise your candle for clemency. Yes. And our governor, I was here last year when the council spoke and he spoke with, you know, passion and he said that he was going to do X, Y, Z. And as Alan said, it didn't turn 
turn into action. And our governor, you heard Alan said, that was calling or his people were calling legislators not to come to this candle, uh, clemency candle. But the bottom line is this. I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago, in February, during the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, there was going to be a march and rally from, uh, from the, the center to the governor's mansion about education funding. And one of his henchmen met with me the night before and said, you know, can't we call this off and do it during the week? And I said, during the week? No one will be here. And so I said, well, listen, I'm not the one who organized this. They're using me as a tool because I was involved in the campaign for fiscal equity. But let me call a couple of people that was organizing this, and then you can meet with them, Charlie King. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so did I say a name? I'm sorry. And I did. And they came to the, they came to the hotel and met and basically said, you know, the governor's family is going to be up tomorrow and he's going to be pretty upset if y'all hold this rally in front of Governor's Mansion. And I said, the Governor's Mansion? That's not his house. That's our house. We can march on our house anytime we want to. Yes. Are you afraid of the Governor? No. Are you afraid of Governor Cuomo? No. Are you, do you want a dictator in office? No. no. Do you believe in democracy? Yes. yes. I do too. And I say to all of you, don't be afraid. Stand up and fight for what you believe is right. And now I'm going to quote a couple of things, Alan, that you had last year when I went to my email and it says, our lives begin the day we become silent about things that matter. Our lives begin the day we become silent about things that matter. Now, who said that? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. And another quote on your program. You will achieve more in the world through acts of mercy than you will, than you will through acts of retribution. And who is that? Nelson Mandela. And then a couple of things that were on there. And it says, give people a second chance. Release aging people in prison. Show mercy. Why must people die in prison? And the last thing says, Governor Cuomo? Governor Cuomo? Governor Cuomo? Get a heart. Thank you. Governor Cuomo, you have no heart. James, would you like to come up and say a few words? <laughs>